Hello, this is Geo. Hey, look what I have here. I have an HDMI video capture card. Let's take a look at this today. Okay, so opening up the box, we have the card right here and a nice little wrapper. And let's open this thing up. And this is what we have in the box. Now, if you're looking for capture cards, this is not the best capture card in the world. It's, it's not one of those high priced ones. This is kind of a lower priced version of a uh, HDMI 1080p capture card. This one is under the brand name Digit Now, but this identical capture card as you see here um, goes by many, many different names and manufacturers. Basically, this is a clone, uh, kind of a clone version capture card. You'll see this particular one on, let's say, Amazon or eBay under multiple names. I'll just show you a few of them right now. But Digit, Digit Now is kind of uh, a known brand out there, and so maybe it's a little more trusted, but I don't know. Uh, I understand that uh, the exterior might look identical in many of these capture cards, but the components inside might vary in quality. I understand this particular type of card doesn't have a heat sink, so maybe it could heat up and burn out if you're not careful, depending on uh, which manufacturer. But this uh, particular capture card runs for about 30 to $50, depending on what you can find. Now you might notice it has a 4K Ultra HD. Now that's just the pass through. That is not the recording capture quality. The recording uh, is maximum capture is 1080p. And that really depends on the device uh, you're using. If your device, let's say uh, some kind of gaming console doesn't do 1080p, you will not get 1080p. So this particular card comes with an HDMI cable itself. It has a nice little HDMI cable there. It has a uh, USB cable. Now it uh, this is compatible with 3.0 USB. So you want to make sure that you have that capability on your laptop or computer. Uh, it's usually if you have the plug in with a little blue symbol at least uh, that is the 3.0 USB connection. And then we also have a nice little uh, uh, kind of user manual. This one's pretty good actually. This one has fairly uh, detailed uh, instructions. Some of the other ones that I've seen online just come with pretty much like a little piece of paper like that. So at least the digit now gives you a little bit more detail and reading material. So this is compatible with Windows uh, computers, but also Macs as well, if you're interested in a capture card for Macs and also Linux and um, Android, uh, it is compatible with those. And so looking at the capture card, you can tell it's in a little uh, kind of metallic case here. On one side, you have the HDMI input there. Uh, that would be from your device, either your gaming console or uh, whatever you're plugging in, either you, perhaps a camera or a video recorder. Uh, and then this on this side is your HDMI output. Now this would be uh, to your TV. Let's say you're uh, playing a game and you wanna record it at the same time, but also see it displayed on television. This is where you would connect it to your television and that is your um, 4K Pass through. Now, I don't believe that the pass through is HDR. I think it's SDR. So just uh, consider that when you're purchasing this unit. And so on the other side, you do have your USB port. The uh, you see the blue color right there. So it is a 3.0 USB port, and this is what you would be connecting to your computer. You also have a headphone jack and a microphone port as well. So let's connect this thing to our video source and see how it works. So one annoying aspect to this particular device is it only came with a 20 inch USB cable. So um, this might be fine for a laptop, but I'm using a desktop today. So all the devices will have to be pretty close to the desktop. A little annoying, but you could always purchase a longer USB cable. Just make sure that it has the little blue uh, color on it indicating 3.0. 
But now the HDMI cable, it is about four feet uh, long, which is still, eh, it, it may be long enough for your purposes, but if you want a longer one, you could also purchase a longer U um, HDMI cable. So let's start with just testing it on the switch. I have a switch in its little container right here. We have the capture device and we have the uh, USB cable. So I'm gonna just start by install, uh, inserting the USB cable into the USB slot there. And then this is the HDMI. It's already plugged into the switch. So I'm gonna do the HDMI into the HDMI input, which is right there. Now, uh, I'm not displaying this on a television screen, so I won't have an output to the TV screen. So we'll just leave that unplugged for now. And then at the back of my computer, I'm gonna just install this with the USB 3.0 connection there. If I can figure out which way it goes. There you go. So on my computer screen, you can see I have a little icon here, OBS Studio. And this is the software I'm gonna be using to capture the image from the switch. Now, uh, this is free uh, software and that you can download. Uh, I, I understand you can also use other capture software such as VLC or AMCAP or others, but OBS is very well known and highly used and recommended. Okay, here you see OBS open, and basically all it's doing right now is it's screen capturing itself. So it's just multiple windows, just like infinity windows. But what we need to do for our capture card is to designate a new uh, source. So we're gonna go down to this lower left uh, under source and hit plus. So we'll hit plus there. And sorry about all the repetitiveness there, but um, then we wanna go to uh, video capture device. So we'll select that. And then here it's just naming a new device. And so uh, we'll just go ahead um, and hit okay. And here you go. Uh, right now it's seeing my Dazzle uh, recorder, but you want to switch the device down to USB video. And that will be um, the, uh, the capture card. So we'll go ahead and select that. And as you can see, the screen turned black uh, because I do not have the switch on. So let's go ahead and turn on the switch, turn on the power, it starts warming up. And there you go, it actually sees the video uh, streaming in from the switch. And this is, this is not a th uh, through uh, video, this is actually the captured image of the video as you can see here. But before we do anything else, we need to also add in sound. So we go down to the bottom and it says capture only sound. We wanna switch this to output um, desktop audio. So wave out. So we wanna select that. Uh, I think I wanna use, use custom and digital audio info. Yeah, USB digital audio. So that's what we want and we hit okay. And now we should be all set up to start playing a game on the Switch. Okay, so from the screen, we wanna just uh, hit the A button. So on our, on our console there, so we'll go ahead and hit A. And you can see we have a, an assortment of games here. We'll go ahead and hit Mario Kart Deluxe. And yeah, that's fine. And then we should start getting into the game. And there you go, it seems to work. It's in good high quality uh, definition. So this seems to work just fine, perfect. So let's move on to a different video source. Let's go to a DVD Blu-ray player. So I do have a Sony Blu-ray player right here and I did plug it in uh, to the capture card uh, via the HDMI cable, which is right here, and the USB cable is in my computer. I do have a movie inside the Blu-ray player. So there are a lot of issues with capturing and copying movies. 
I discourage you from uh, even trying to copy entire movies. Uh, however, if you are a YouTuber and just want clips of movies, um, you can do that with this capture card. Uh, normally with a typical Blu-ray or DVD, there are securities in place that prevent you from copying content, but this, uh, this capture card will allow you to capture the images through OBS or an equivalent software. Okay, so with the Blu-ray player plugged in, you just get a black screen on the OBS um, screen there. And so let's go ahead and turn on the Blu-ray player. And there you go, you see the Sony uh, Blu-ray. You hear a little bit of static in the background. So that is indicating uh, at least audio. Hopefully the disc is okay. Ah, there it goes, it disappeared. So we'll wait for the uh, Blu-ray player to load up. There you go, you get the main Sony screen. So let's just go ahead and start the uh, movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And there you go, you get the introduction to the movie. So we are seeing some vivid video and audio. So it seems like it works pretty well. And I don't think I'll play the movie. Let's get to the main screen here. And that's the main introduction. So there you go. And we'll go ahead and stop it from here. Okay, I'm back to just my uh, Windows screen capture here. I did wanna show one thing. Uh, there is a little bit of an audio delay on uh, the video recording. And I just wanted to show you one way to help resolve that. If you go to your desktop audio uh, bar right here and uh, select a little crank right here and go to advanced audio properties. Here uh, you can on, on the sync offset, you could adjust it. And so if there's a delay here, I have it set at uh, negative 183 uh, milliseconds. And that seems to sync up pretty well. Uh, 500 milliseconds is about half a second. And so you can kind of adjust it there and uh, adjust this and try to get the audio synced with the video. So that's the only issue you might uh, experience uh, using the capture device. And there you go. That is the HDMI capture card that you see right here. It seems to work pretty well. Uh, I can't uh, say that it's the best capture card for let's say gaming uh, streaming purposes, but it is was only around $30, $35 this one. I think uh, some of them go up to $50, but that's pretty cheap for a capture card that does high quality HDMI video and sound. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did like it, please hit that like button at the bottom of the screen and even consider subscribing to my channel. I have many more videos to come, bye-bye.